Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. It's great to be with you on this Friday. Today is March the 12th, 2021. This month is flying. This year is flying. I hope you guys are having a good and better year than 2020. If you had a great year in 2020, I hope it's even better this one. If you had a terrible, disastrous, very terrible, very bad, very no good, no count year last year, I hope that it is tremendously better. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Harriet. Hi, how are you guys doing? Hi, Robert. Hi, Bob McNeese. Hi, Neil. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Raymond. Hit the hearts of the lights. Go crazy on those and get out your Bibles. Remember, we're doing the Bible Project 21 in the message edition of the Bible, but you can follow in your edition of the Bible. I would like to suggest if you have a translation of the Bible that you do not read because it is difficult to understand, I think it is more important that you have a translation that you will understand and read than one you cannot understand that is a coffee table dust collector. And I am Doug Bell, and I approve this message. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Neil. Hi, Chris. Hi, Ed. We're going to be picking up at Proverbs chapter 3, starting in verse 13. We're reading the Bible together. We're reading it 15 minutes a day. We are also recording it audibly for my sons and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren and my great-great-grandchildren. I want to leave a legacy of the word behind and in my voice. I was thinking about it the other day. Not only will they have uh, the legacy of the audio, they'll have the unedited version of the video. Ha. <laughs> So yeah, there, there's going to be plenty of video and audio. So what I want to encourage you to do is leave a legacy behind as well. This all generated after my father's funeral uh, in 2011, in October of 2011. Uh, I did the services for his funeral, and afterward I went frantically looking and searching for any audio, any video I could find uh, to be able to see him and hear his voice again. So that inspired me. Uh, to leave as much as I could for my boys. Hi, Jeff England. Hi, hi Stacy. Hi, Audra. Hi, David Cook. So I want to go ahead and get ready to get started. Again, we're in Proverbs chapter 3. We're reading from the message version of the Bible, but you can read from the version that you have if you do not have a message version of the Bible and would like one. Uh, we might can find you one at a greatly reduced cost. Uh, we're starting at verse 13, and I'm going to set up my alarm. 15 minutes. I'm turning on the recording, and uh, we're simply reading the Bible together. We're in, we're in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13. The very tree of life. You're blessed when you meet Lady Wisdom, when you make friends with Madam Insight. She's worth far more than money in the bank. Just listen to that. You're blessed when you meet Lady Wisdom. When you make friends with Madam Insight, she's worth far more than money in the bank. Her friendship is better than a big salary. Her value exceeds all the trappings of wealth. Nothing you could wish for holds a candle to her. With one hand, she gives long life, and with the other, she confers recognition. Her manner is beautiful, her life wonderfully complete. She's the very tree of life to those who embrace her. Hold tight. And be blessed. With Lady Wisdom, God formed the earth. With Madam Insight, he raised heaven. They knew when to signal rivers and springs to the surface and do to descend from the night sky. Never walk away. Math, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 21. Dear friend, guard clear thinking and common sense with your life. Don't for a minute lose sight of them. They'll keep your soul alive and well. They'll keep you fit and active, attractive as well. You'll travel safely. You'll neither tie, tire nor trip. You'll take afternoon naps without a worry. You'll enjoy a good night's sleep. No need to panic over alarms or surprises or predictions that doomsday is just around the corner because God will be right there with you. He'll keep you safe and sound. Never walk away from someone who deserves help. Your hand is God's hand for that person. Sons, I want you to pay special attention to 
that in uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27, and I'm going to read it to you specifically. Paxton, never walk away from someone who deserves help. Your hand is God's hand for that person. Cooper, never walk away from someone who deserves help. Your hand is God's hand for that person. Jarvis, never walk away from someone who deserves help. Your hand is God's hand for that person. Boys, I'm going to take it a little bit further. Never walk away from someone who doesn't deserve your help. Your hand is God's hand for that person. Don't tell your neighbor, maybe some other time, or try me again tomorrow. When the money's right there in your pocket, don't figure ways of taking advantage of your neighbor when he's sitting there trusting and unsuspecting. Don't walk around with a chip on your shoulder always spoiling for a fight. Don't try to be like those who shoulder their way through life. Why be a bully? Why not, you say? Because God can't stand twisted souls. It is the straightforward who get his respect. God's curse blights the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He gives proud skeptics a cold shoulder, but if you're down on your luck, he's right there to help you. Wise living gets rewarded with honor. Stupid living gets you the booby prize. Proverbs chapter four. Your life is at stake. Listen, friends, to some fatherly advice. Sit up and take notice so you'll know how to live. I'm giving you good counsel. Don't let it go in one ear and out the other. When I was a boy at my father's knee, the pride and joy of my mother, he would sit me down and drill me. Take this to heart. Do what I tell you and you'll live. Sell everything and buy wisdom. Forage for understanding. Don't forget one word. Don't deviate an inch. Never walk away from wisdom. She guards your life. Love her. She keeps her eye on you. Above all and before all, do this. Get wisdom. Write this at the top of your list. Get understanding. Throw your arms around her. Believe me, you won't regret it. Never let her go. She'll make your life glorious. She'll garland your life with grace. She'll festoon your days with beauty. Dear friend, take my advice. It will add years to your life. I'm writing out clear directions to wisdom's way. I'm drawing a map to the righteous road. I don't want you to end up in blind alleys or wasting time making wrong turns. Hold tight to good advice. Don't relax your grip. Guard it well. Your life is at stake. Don't take the wicked bypass. Don't so much as set foot on that road. Stay clear of it. Give it a wide berth. Make a detour and be on your way. Evil people are restless unless they're making trouble. They can't get a good night's sleep unless they've made life miserable for somebody. Perversity is their food and drink and violence is their drug of choice. The ways of right living people glow with light. The longer they live, the brighter they shine. But the road of the wrongdoing gets darker and darker. Travelers can't see a thing, they fall flat on their faces. Learn it by heart. Proverbs chapter four, verse 20. Dear friend, listen well to my words. Tune your ears to my voice. Keep my message in plain view at all times. Concentrate. Learn it by heart. Those who discover these words live, really live, body and soul. They're bursting with health. Keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. Don't talk out of both sides of your mouth. Avoid careless banter, white lies, and gossip. Keep your eyes straight ahead. Ignore all sides show distractions. Watch your step, and the road will stretch, stretch out smooth before you. Look neither to the right nor the left. Leave evil in the dust. Nothing but sin and bones. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1. 
Dear friend, pay, pay close attention to this, my wisdom. Listen very closely to the way I see it. Then you'll acquire a taste for good sense. What I tell you will keep you out of trouble. The lips of a seductive woman are oh so sweet. Her soft words are so smooth. But it won't be long before she's gravel in your mouth, a pain in your gut, a wound in your heart. She's dancing down the perfume path to death. She's headed straight for hell and taking you with her. She hasn't a clue about real life, about who she is or where she is going. So, my friend, listen closely. Don't treat my words casually. Keep your distance from such a woman. Absolutely stay out of her neighborhood. You don't want to squander your wonderful life and to waste your precious life among the hard-hearted. Why should you allow strangers to take advantage of you? Why be exploited by those who care nothing for you? You don't want to end your life full of regrets. Nothing but sin and bones. Saying, oh, why didn't I do what they told me? Why did I reject a disciplined life? Why didn't I listen to my mentors or take the advice of my teachers seriously? My life is ruined. I haven't one blessed thing to show for my life. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 15. Never take love for granted. Do you know the saying, drink from your own rain barrel? Draw water from your own spring-fed well? It is true. Otherwise, you may one day come home and find that your barrel is empty and your well polluted. Your spring water is for you and you only, not to be passed around among strangers. Bless your fresh-flowing fountain. Enjoy the wife you married as a young man. Lovely as an angel, beautiful as a rose, don't ever quit taking delight in her body. Never take her love for granted. Why would you trade enduring intimacies for cheap thrills with a prostitute? For dalliance with a promiscuous stranger. Mark well that God doesn't miss a move that you make. He's aware of every step that you take. The shadow of your sin will overtake you. You will find yourself stumbling all over yourself in the dark. Death is the reward for an undisciplined life. You foolish decision makers, your foolishness and your foolish decisions trap you in a dead end. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 1. Like a deer from a hunter. Dear friend, if you've gone into hock with your neighbor or locked yourself into a deal with a stranger, if you've impulsively promised the shirt off your back and now find yourself shivering out in the cold, friend, don't waste a minute. Get yourself out of this mess. You're in that man's clutches. Go. Put on a long face and act desperate. Don't procrastinate. There's no time to lose. Run like a deer from the hunter and fly like a bird from the trapper. A lesson from the ant. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. You lazy fool, look at an ant. Watch it closely. Let it teach you a thing or two. Nobody has to tell it what to do. All summer it stores up food. At harvest, it stockpiles provision. So how long are you going to laze around doing nothing? How long before you get out of bed? A nap here, a nap there, a day off here, a day off there. Sit back, take it easy. Don't you know what comes next? Just this, you can look forward to a dirt poor life. Poverty, your permanent house guest. Proverbs chapter six. Verse 12, always cooking up something nasty. Swindlers and scoundrels take out both, talk out both sides of their mouths. They wink at each other. They shuffle their feet. They cross their fingers behind their backs. Their perverse minds are always cooking up something nasty, always stirring up trouble. Catastrophe is just around the corner for them. A total wreck. Their lives ruined beyond repair. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16, seven things that God hates. Here are six things God hates 
and one more that he loathes with a passion. Eyes that are arrogant, a tongue that lies, hands that murder the innocent, a heart that hatches evil plots, feet that race down a wicked track, a mouth that lies. Boys, he's mentioned that one twice. He also mentioned it first. A mouth that lies under oath, a troublemaker in their family. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 20. Good friend, follow your father's good advice. This is a warning on adultery. Don't wander off from your mother's teaching. Wrap yourself in them from head to foot. Wear them, wear them like a scarf around your neck. Wherever you walk, they'll guide you. Wherever you rest, they'll guard you. And wherever you wake up, they'll tell you what's next. For sound advice is a beacon. Good teaching is a light. Moral discipline is a life path. They'll protect you from promiscuous women, from the seductress talk of a temptress. Don't lustfully fantasize on her beauty, nor be taken in by her bedroom eyes. You can buy an hour with a prostitute for a loaf of bread, but a promiscuous woman may well eat you alive. Can you build a fire in your lap and not burn your pants? Can you walk barefoot on hot coals and not get blisters? It is the same when you have sex with your neighbor's wife. Touch her and you'll pay for it. No excuses. Hunger is no excuse for a thief to steal. When he's caught, he has to pay it back even if he has to put his whole house in hock. Adultery is a brainless act, self-destroying, self-destruction. Expect a bloody nose, a black eye, and a reputation ruined for good. For jealousy detonates rage in a cheated husband. While for revenge, he won't make allowances. Nothing you can say, nothing you will pay. Will it all make it right? Neither bribes nor reason will satisfy him. And that is where we will stop today after reading 15 minutes of the word together. My suggestion to you is that as we are going through the Bible Project 21, that you go back and that you reread the day's readings, whether in the message, the NIV, the New American Standard, the New King James Version, the King James Version, if you want to read something that you might not understand, uh, you might as well read it in hieroglyphics in some cases, but more power to you. But reread it, wrestle with it, embrace it, hold on to it tightly, follow the principles of it, Listen, God created the laws of gravity. They are true. And if you go jump off your roof, you're going to land. Okay? And, and the laws of God are the same with ethics, morality. The, the laws of God are the same with conscience, principles. They are true. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person listening and every person watching that no one would deceive themselves by being a hearer of the word and not a doer also. That hearing the word, amening the word, taking notes on the word, and teaching the word um, is of no value, lest it be followed. Lord, we have hidden your word in our heart that we might not sin against the laws, the principles of God. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. I love you guys. I hope you have a great, great weekend. I am so excited about the weekend at Cross Point Church that uh, we're about to have because we're going uh, back into the this uh, to be continued series, and wow, man, this Sunday we're going to be talking about some heavy, heavy, heavy stuff, and it's going to involve a diet coke. I don't drink these things. I don't drink caffeinated beverages at all. I guess it's been three, four, maybe going on five years since I've drank. Uh, Caffeinated beverages, not a caffeinated beverage, I'm sorry, I drank tea and coffee. Carbonated is what I meant to say. I don't drink sodas and stuff, but this, I'm going to pop a, I'm going to pop a cap.
on Papa Cap uh, for a life well lived and talk about what it means to have a live a life and end a life worthy of the crown of life. How to embrace struggles and hardships and trials and tribulations and what that produces in a person's life is uh, far more valuable than rubies or gold. It's uh, this weekend's powerful. I, I wouldn't, if, if you have your own home church, make sure that you go and support and serve and participate in your home church. Uh, but uh, also, you might want to pick up this message online. So I'm out of here. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Tell somebody about Jesus. Invite somebody to the Bible Project. Buy a Bible for somebody. Give it to them. Get you a message version. If you can't find one, if you can't afford one, let me know. I'll get it to you. And arrivederci. Saranara. Arrivor. Later. David, David, you nailed that, David Cook. Integrity is vital. It's one of those things that uh, once broken is hard to regain in the way that it once was, for sure. But we are, we're fragile people. We are broken people. Let's not get beyond that. None of us are beyond losing, breaking, misplacing our integrity. So thank God for Jesus, eh? Bye, everybody.